Hi, in this video we're looking at Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law is one of three major gas laws. This is an empirical gas law. And what Gay-Lussac's law relates is pressure to temperature if we're holding volume constant. So let's take a look at this depiction here. If you've seen my video on Charles' law, you'll notice that this screen looks very similar. The only difference is that we have the same volume on the left and the right. What's also changed, and you really can't see it here, is that the pressure is, is much greater in the right scenario than in the left one. Let's take a look at what's going on in each of these boxes. In the left box, I have a certain pressure and a certain temperature. I have a certain number of gas particles. This looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10 total. On the right side, I have the same number of gas particles, but they're moving much faster within the same space. That means they're going to be hitting the walls of their container at a much greater frequency. And that means the force per area is going to increase, and that's exactly what pressure is. So at higher temperatures, given constant volumes, you'll also have higher pressures. And how do I represent this algebraically? It's like this. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Now again, the one and the two just represent the different situations of the same gas sample. So you can think of this like it's a before and this like it's an after. Temperature has to be in Kelvins. It can't be in Celsius. And the reason for that, again, is because Celsius uh, scales can go negative. And if you were to use a negative temperature in here, you may end up calculating a negative pressure, which cannot happen. So we have to use a temperature scale that is an absolute scale, meaning it's only positive or zero. And uh, the other piece with this is that when you set them up like fractions like this, that means that as P2 increases compared to P1, T2 would also have to increase compared to T1 in order for this uh, equal statement to ring true. Uh, the same is true if they both decrease. If one decreases, the other has to as well. And so setting this fraction up on either side is uh, representative of a direct relationship, which is something that Gay-Lussac's law has. So let's try an example problem. This says a sealed sample of gas uh, at 285 kelvins exerts a pressure of 1.25 atmospheres. If cooled to negative 2 degrees Celsius, oh, you got to notice this, degrees Celsius, we've got to get that into kelvins. So I would add 273 to this, and that results in a kelvin temperature of 271. Uh, what is the new pressure? Okay, so let's just plug in what we have. Uh, P1 would be 125 atmospheres. And on the bottom of that is 285 kelvins. I don't have to convert this because it's already in kelvins. So evil chemistry teachers will give you Celsius. Uh, I'm an evil chemistry teacher. So that means I'm going to want to keep testing your ability to recognize that we need to convert to kelvins and also your ability to convert to kelvins. And so that's going to be popping up quite a bit. On the other side, we have 271 kelvins as the new temperature, and we're meant to find uh, the new pressure. So for this, we want to cross multiply. I'm typing in 1.25 times 271, and then I'm dividing by 285, and that's giving me my P2. And P2 is equal to, uh, looking for three significant figures here, 1.19 uh, atmospheres. I want to match the unit of the uh, pressure I started with. That's going to be the same thing. Your units on both sides for the different measurements should match. Atmospheres and atmospheres for pressure, kelvins for kelvins for temperature. Um, could I use kilopascals up here on both sides? Absolutely. How about tor? Yep. How about millimeters of mercury? Same thing as tor. So, yep. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it matches. And that's what gay lussacs law is. It's as pressure increases of a sealed constant volume gas sample, uh, the temperature will also increase. Or as temperature decreases, the pressure will also decrease. It's a direct relationship. And it's these three major gas laws that combine pretty soon to form the combined gas law. Thank you.